Hey everybody, it's Dr. Levi Harrison. Welcome to COVID series number three. This is the third installment in our talk about COVID-19, the coronavirus. You know, we've talked before about how to place a mask properly, how to put it on, how to take it off, how to avoid what I call reporter's chin, as well as um, we talked before about the basics of coronavirus, you know, why we call it a novel coronavirus. So today, uh, we're going to talk about how to deal with coronavirus. I want to give you some easy mental health tips that will really help you during this time where, uh, of hyper-isolation. You know, right now, everybody's just so compartmentalized. You know, you're there at home with, with, our, with our families, our spouses, our kids. Um, I, I want to talk about how to deal with that, how to deal with family, how to deal with, with business right now, because everything is so... Uh, we're in a state of hyper vigilance right now, as well as hyper isolation, and I, as well as this this word that I can't stand of social distancing. Uh, please, 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 I, I hope we can just rename this as physical distancing. You want to keep a physical distance. I get it. Yes, we need to do that. It's appropriate. However, the the social distance is just the opposite. With it, there, there's really an inverse proportion to me. If you have more physical distancing, then you want to you want to have less social uh, interaction. I don't think so. You know, if you have more physical distancing, you want to have more social closeness. You want you want to be reaching out to people more. You know, letting people know that you love them, that you appreciate them, that you're that you want to make sure that they're safe and that they're healthy. So I want to I want to talk about today. So let's go through the basics. So the first is following. Number one, during this time of social distancing, make sure that you're reaching out to people in your life to let them know that that you love them, that you're checking on them, uh, that you want them to be healthy. Ask them, can you do something for them? Like, like send them some groceries via Amazon. Pick up some groceries for them and leave them outside their door. Uh, check on your neighbors right now so that, you know, it's really great that we, when we do things outside of ourselves, we see that the picture of life is not simply painted with our own colors. There's more color in life when we bring on the, 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 the paintbrush is grand with, with the colors of other people, you know, because they really increase the vitality of our lives. So let's, let's do that. Reach out to your neighbors, reach out to your family, um, reach out to your coworkers, um, don't don't just let the world be about you living in this this box of hyper isolation. It's it's not healthy. It really isn't. Now, I say that because when we communicate with other people, we increase the 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 social closeness. That's what I'm about about social closeness, not distancing. About social closeness. So when you're when you are reaching out to people, you let them know that you you care, and then you're also sending them this subliminal signal that you also want someone to care about you. And guess what? That's okay. We're human beings. We need touch. We need love. We need we need to have people tell us that we love them, that they love us, and that that people care about us. That we're not on the island by ourselves. Because if you were, survival may not be as good. It's always better to to be with other people, um, and I want you to consider doing that. Now, the third tip that I want to give you is that I'd like you to continue to do what we've talked about on this show many, many times, is keeping a, a gratitude journal. Yes, even in the time of COVID, even in this crazy pandemic health crisis, yes, still find things to be grateful for. For example, you woke up this morning, uh, Hopefully your kids are healthy. Hopefully your, your husband or wife or spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend, that they're healthy. Hopefully you have pets and that they're healthy. There, there's a lot to be grateful for. So every day, you know, make just one page of your, of your notebook, journal about how you're feeling today and what you expect from today, and then write down three or five things that you're grateful for. That's so important because it reminds you that even in our darkest times, and this is a pretty dark one, in our darkest times, you can, you can, you, you, you can still be the light. You can still bring forth the light. You can still bring forth some love, some kindness, some service. So in the darkest of times, you can still bring it. And gratitude, I look at gratitude as an anchor of hope. Gratitude really brings us, it's like a great book, huh? 
gratitude, anchor of hope. I got to think about that one. Um, so I think gratitude really reminds us to be be grateful for everything that's happening around us, no matter how dark. It, it challenges us to find the hope and the goodness in in the darkness. We want to find that. We want to find the, the the goodness in the midst of of this crazy hyper isolation and and physical distancing. We want to find hope there and gratitude will bring on the joy, will bring on the magnificence, will bring on the beneficence. It will bring on all of these feelings of, of, of joy and health and happiness and goodness and, and a sense of you're right where you're supposed to be, even in this, this dark, dark time. You know, your smile may bring joy to someone today. Your phone call to someone may, may bring them happiness, may let them know that, they're, that you care for them. Um, so please, please do that. The other thing that I want to share with you is when it comes to COVID, please, please do not watch the news every day. If you really want to feel horrible, depressed, and live in a sense of overwhelm and anxiety, watch the news every day. It'll, it'll take you right there. It'll take you right there. Now the good thing is if you don't watch it, you won't go there. Now, I'm not saying don't be informed. No, I'm not saying that. So don't send me any emails about that because I don't want to hear it. I, I, just, I just don't. I, I, not today. Um, you, know, you know, if you want to send me an email like that, just send it to yourself and act like you sent it to me. Good job. So let's talk about this. When, when you're watching the news every day, when you go to sleep at night, that's the last thing that you see. All those subliminal messages are in your head, roaming free. Don't do it to yourself. You know, if you want to watch the news, maybe watch every two or three days. But every day, please don't do it to yourself. And social media the same way. Yeah, great. Get on social media. Send out some great posts to people. Send out something encouraging and wonderful and lively and uplifting and an inspirational and aspirational. However, don't get on there and deal with the trolls. Don't forget, the Internet is a place for a lot of what I call keyboard gangsters. These are people who will get online and will say and do anything online. If you meet them in person, they will be the most timid, silent people you've ever met. So don't be bullied by them. Don't even respond to them. I, I stopped responding to these people years ago. I just, you know, I want to live in positivity. I want to live feeling good, feeling healthy, feeling happy, feeling wonderful, feeling like I'm living a life of service. I want you to feel the same way. So, again, my next tip is... I want to I want to re, I want to reiterate the previous one. Don't watch TV every day. Don't watch the news every day. Don't be on social media every day. And if you are on social media, send out positive messages, but don't deal with the trolls. Just just delete them. Delete, delete, delete. That's one of my favorite buttons on on my phone and on my I know my my keyboard now. Delete. I just love it. When I because it just takes things out. The other the other one that I love to do is this, a, I'm going to give you a, a word. If, if you want to have a great life, embrace this word. You ready for it? B-L-O-C-K. Block. I just love that. <laughs> you know, when somebody like, sends me something on Twitter, uh, Facebook, I just block. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you know, now they may, they may change their address because mo most people have multiple, you know, Facebook and, and email you know, they may send it with be another one, but that one is blocked, and you send me something else, guess what? I'm going to block you again. So just think about the power of the B, the power of the block. It's, it's, I love it. So I want to share that with you. So keep that as one of the things that you can do for your own mental health. Now, the other thing I want to tell you about is the number one thing here, too, is for your schedule, have a schedule every day when you're dealing with this. You know, know what time you're going to get up, what you're going to do, when you're going to exercise, when you're going to make some calls, when you're going to pay bills. You know, you don't want to be just getting up and say, okay, uh, let me see what I'm going to do today. That's not it. You want to really have a strategy and a plan and a structure for the day because with structure, we get things achieved in a more efficient economic way. So structure is important. So again, have structure. The next tip I want to tell you and share with you is overwhelm. I know so many people right now that are in a state of 
well, what am I going to do to pay my rent, to pay my mortgage, to keep my lights on, to pay my, my car note, to, to put gas in my car, to have the lights on, to pay for my insurance? I, I, I have so many people sending me emails about that. So the thing that I want to share with you is the following. Number one, so many people are going through this. You're not by yourself. Not that that makes it better. Number two, you can handle this. You've done it before. You can do it. Number three, you sit down. You make a list of what are the financial priorities that you have in your life. What are the things that you have to do? If you can't meet those priorities, then you call the landlord. You call the, the bank. You, you let people know that you cannot pay this right now and why and that you need you need an advance on time. You need it to be extended that you pay what you can. If you can only pay a little bit, it's better than paying nothing. So let them know. And then the other thing is use your support system. Reach out to your family, your friends, and let them know, hey, I need help. I need you right now. I, I can't buy food. I can't buy toiletries. I need your help. Reach out to your family. Don't feel too proud to do that. Don't. Don't feel too proud. You know, family is family, you know, and then don't forget, reach out to your friends because there are some friends in our lives that are even closer to us than our family, and that's not a bad thing. It just, it is what it is. I mean, I have so many friends that are a hundred times I'm more close to them than in some people in my family. Oh my God, easily. So reach out to them so that you're not in overload. So again, just a quick recap about that. Have structure in your life. You know, what time you're getting up, what time you're going to bed, when you're going to exercise, continue to exercise. Exercise will release some of those endorphins and serotonin and all these things that we need in our bodies to feel really good. It'll help you to do that, all right, as well as control your blood sugar levels, keep your blood pressure down, you know, minimize your risk for stroke and cardiovascular disease, exercise, you know, I'm, I'm an exercise advocate. There's nothing like it. I think it's one of the, the best things we can do. And then, of course, reaching out for help so you don't feel overwhelmed financially. Now, let's talk about this. Also, reach out to people if you feel overwhelmed psychologically, if you're thinking about suicide, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling like you're in a place you don't have control of your, your agency of your own life. You know, I want you to know that you're not alone. You know, we're going to put on the screen. We'll give you the number for the, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. You can reach out to them, and they can, they can help you. You know, we want to help you. You can, you can reach out to family members, to your, to your pastor, to your priest, to your rabbi, to members of your church, your family, your neighbors, your family, your friends. You're not by yourself. So if you're feeling psychologically just overwhelmed, like you don't know what to do, before you do anything, reach out to someone who loves you, who cares for you, and reach out to a system that's in place to help you get over this hump. It's just a hump. You know, I call it the CH, the COVID hump. We're all going to get through this. We're going to get through it, and we're going to be better for it. I believe that. The country will be better for it. The world will be better for it. How? I don't know totally right now, you know, I, and I'm not claiming I have all the answers. But I do believe that when we go through things, it's just that. We go through them. We don't stay in it. We go through it, and hopefully things are better on the other side. We just have to think positively, live in gratitude, live in service, do those things I talked about earlier. I'll just recap a few of those. Having structure in your life, reaching out to people and friends that can help you financially, reaching out to friends, families, and institutes, as well as to your spiritual community if you feel you are psychologically overwhelmed. Letting institutions know that you need help right now financially, the banks, your, your uh, landlords, you know, people that you owe money to, you know, bills that you have, let them know you can't pay it now. In good faith, you want to pay it, but you don't have it because you've been laid off or you're not working, you don't have the money, your, your savings are exhausted. You know, don't stay alone in this. Let people know you need the help so that you can get the help, all right? And then the thing I want to add also is that meditation, you know, Prayer is great also. If you pray, it's wonderful. I know so many people who don't pray, and I don't have any judgment about that if you pray or meditate, but I do want to recommend the power of meditation. I think if you can sit in, in stillness, in the thunderous, thunderous quietude of stillness, there's nothing like it. If you can do that three, maybe at least two times a day for 5, 10, 15 minutes, just to sit quietly, to listen to your breath, 
to think about something that makes you happy. Think about someone that makes you happy. Think about someone whom you love or that whom you think believe uh, whom you believe loves you. Or think about nothing. Just think about giving your your body a what I call uh, a mind free day where you just release everything. Just sit in stillness. We have to decompress like that. You have to take a holiday from social media. Don't watch the news every day. Don't go to sleep watching the news, of course. Don't let it be the first thing you do in the morning, the last thing you do at night, unless you want to feel depressed and scared and tired and anxious. So I don't think you want to feel that way. I don't want you to feel that way. Um, so I hope these tips are helpful for you. Uh, be sure, of course, you know, get your, your medical checks if you don't feel well, if you're having a fever, body aches. You know, the thing about COVID, it presents with so many different symptom, symptoms. You know, symptomatology is not only one classic thing of a headache or an earache. There's so many things. It presents differently in children versus adults, and it, it seems to never be the same. It seems to be very different from, you know, someone presenting with just red eyes and a fever, a cough, uh, a scratchy throat, not feeling well overall, feeling fatigued, uh, feeling very tired, a loss of their their ability to smell, to taste. It, it's so different in everyone, it seems. So I want you to, if you feel, if you don't feel good, make sure you, you go and you get checked and you get tested. And, and don't feel embarrassed about that. One of my patients yesterday, uh, she, she was frank about it. She said, you know, if I were to get tested and be positive, she said, I, she said she wouldn't tell anyone because she thought people would isolate her. And I said, just the opposite. I said, that gives people a chance to embrace you even more. They'll love you even more. They want to help you even more. And that's when we need people the most, when we're down. We don't only need them in the happy time. We have to remember that as human beings, we need people in the valley, not just at the top of the mountain. When we're in the valley, that's when we really need people the most. So... Those are the things I want to share with you. I hope it helps you. It, it helps me by just talking about them. And uh, I want you to be healthy physically, spiritually, and psychologically. And I want you to know that you have a support system. Reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, even Twitter. I'm on all those, those, those uh, social media platforms. And I'm here to be of service to you so you're not by yourself. All right. So this is our COVID series number three. I hope this was helpful to you. Give me your comments on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Again, it's my name, Dr. Levi Harrison, D-R-L-E-V-I Harrison. All right. I look forward to hearing from you. This is Dr. Levi. Have a great, great week. Remember, be kind to our veterans. Those great women and men deserve our utmost respect, as well as, of course, our first responders. Um, don't say hello to them. Buy them lunch. Be kind. Uh, be compassionate because they are compassion. They're the essence of compassion because they're on the front line giving of themselves and giving their lives often. So let's, let's be mindful of that. Well, this is Dr. Levi. Today is May 21st. Actually, today is May 28th. Um, is, it not, is that correct? Today is the 20th. The 20th. Uh, that's incorrect about that. Today is the 27th. We have so much going on here in the studio. I apologize, guys. So I hope this was helpful for you, and I look forward to interacting with you soon. This is Dr. Levi. Have a great day. Bye.